Good afternoon, class. We're going to take uh, some time today to review the problems in uh, Unit 37 of your textbooks. Largely, these problems focus on um, Ohm's laws, but uh, there are also some other concepts covered here as well. So I thought that to present this material, I would simply go through and solve the even numbered problems with you. Uh, so this is uh, page uh, 201 of your textbook. Uh, you might like to have your calculator uh, with you today for this uh, lesson. And please uh, ensure that you're using the uh, calculator that uh, you received in your kits. So this is the Casio. Okay, so we're going to begin with uh, the second problem there, problem number two. So I'll start by reading the problem. It says, what voltage is required to force 4.5 amperes of current through an electric iron having a resistance of 25.5 ohms? So in this problem, we're given two quantities. So we're given a current of 4.5 and we're also given a resistance equal to 25.5 ohms. We are asked to find the voltage. In this textbook, they use E uh, rather than V, um, but either, of course, is acceptable. So you likely are really familiar with Ohm's law and you know that when finding voltage, what we do is multiply the current by the resistance. So in this case, this means that we take four and a half amps and multiply it by 25 and a half ohms. Okay, and here is our answer. And this quantity is in volts. So 114.75. And we'll include the unit here in our final answer. Okay, let's go on to question four. Now question four is actually referring to this diagram here. The, the diagram included here is for problems three and four. So you can see it's a simple series circuit. And because it's a simple series circuit, um, the total resistance is simply the sum of the three individual resistance values. So R1, R2, and R3 added together give you R total. However, uh, problem four is asking us to find the value of the current for the circuit if R1 is zero. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that uh, the total resistance, which is, um, R1 plus R2 plus R3 can simply be found by adding uh, R2 and R3. So in this case, we're adding 0 0.02 with 12.7, and this will give us 12.72 ohms for the total resistance uh, in that circuit. Okay, so now um, the question is asking us to find the current and we have to use the given value for voltage in the question, which is 230 volts. So now we have the total resistance for that simple series circuit as well as uh, the source voltage. So when we're finding the current, this of course is Ohm's law. Um, so we're going to be dividing, right? So the only time we're multiplying is when we're finding voltage. So we're dividing the voltage by the total resistance. So we'll take 230 and divide it by 12.72. So uh, with your calculators, okay? So 230 divided by 12.72. Okay, and we get this number here. And we need to uh, round it. So 
We should have read the instructions right here at the top. Express the answers to the nearest hundredth. So the nearest hundredth means rounding to two decimal places. So this would be 18.08. So it remains an eight because this number to the right of it is not five or more. So 18.08 is the final answer. And uh, we just calculated current, so we know that this will be in amps. Okay, not bad so far. So let's turn the page and continue with these even numbered problems. Okay, so we are now going to look at uh, problem number six. So problem six reads, a lamp with a resistance of 50 ohms is connected across 120 volts. What current does the lamp receive? Okay, so we are given a resistance value and a voltage value. We are finding current and we know that we just need to divide the voltage by the resistance. So 120 volts is divided by 50 in order to uh, obtain the answer. So 120 divided by 50 is going to give us 2.4 and this of course is amps. Next problem, number eight. Actually, I'm going to start tucking this under to make sure it'll be visible. All right, good, like that. Okay, question eight. A lamp requires a current of 0.94 amperes when connected to a circuit with a voltage of 120 volts. Find the resistance in ohms of the lamp. So we're given current, I, we're given voltage, E, we're finding resistance, R. Ohm's law again, when you find resistance, of course, you're dividing. Anytime you're dividing, so um, when you're finding resistance or current, you will be dividing. And of course, a voltage is always in the numerator. Okay, so these are just all versions of Ohm's law. So in this case, for problem eight, we need to divide 120 volts by 0.94 amps, okay, or 940 milliamps. Calculator, 120 divided by 0.94, oops, I did that wrong, see? <laughs> That's better, 120 divided by 0 0.94. And here's our answer. Now again, remember the instruction was to round to the nearest hundredth. So this is the tenths column, this is the hundredths column where the five is. This time we will be rounding that number up because to the right of that number is a nine. Okay, so we will be writing 127.66. And we've just calculated resistance, so the unit will be ohms. Problem 10. Now, for problems 9 and 10, we are referring to this diagram here. Problem 10 says, find the total resistance in ohms If the current in the circuit is 2.82 amperes and the voltage is 120 volts. Well, this is no different than the other problems we have done. To find that resistance, we need to divide the voltage by the current. So this ends up being uh, exactly like problem um, eight. 
So we take the 120, divide it by 2.82, Okay, the five is the number of interest. To the right of it is only a three, so this remains a five when we write down our answer, 42.55. It will be ohms. Okay, let's uh, continue on to the next page here. So I need to sort of fold this under maybe to make sure we can see it. Hopefully that's okay. Yeah, it seems to be all right. So um, here we go. This problem is a little bit different. Problem 12 reads, if the cross-sectional area of a wire is 16.510 circular mils, what is the diameter, little d, of the wire? And we can see here the relationship between the quantities. The cross-sectional area, which would be measured in circular mils, is equal to d squared. So what does this mean? This means in problem 12, we have the following. D squared is 16,510 circular mils. So if we want to solve for D, this involves taking the square root. So we simply have to take the square root uh, of that number and once again round it to the nearest um, hundredth. So square root here, right? 16, 5, 10 equals, okay, so this is uh, what we'll be writing down, 128.49. It remains a nine because beside it is only a one. So 128.49. And the unit now for D is mils, like this, okay? So again, the cross-sectional area is measured in circular mils, and that was given, um, and then the diameter is measured in mils. Those are the corresponding units for those quantities. Okay, 14, 14 is also um, a little bit different. For problem 14, we are to make use of this formula here. So the formula applies for problems 13 and 14. And the formula is capital R is K times L over D squared. Okay, so remember, we just looked at um, both d and d squared. d is measured in mils, d squared is measured in circular mils. r here of course is still resistance, but we've got these uh, new quantities. k is a constant uh, specific to the wire, so for copper uh, its value is 10.8. And lastly l is the length in feet. So it's important to note that um, L in the formula uh, is measured uh, in feet. Okay, so um, then problem 14 asks us to find the length of a copper wire 0 0.104 inches in diameter it has a resistance of 3.1 ohms. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, let's write down the quantities we know. So this quantity here is the diameter and it's equal to D. So it is 0.104 inches. Okay. Now remember what I said in problem 12, that actually what we need 
is for that diameter to be in mils. So luckily they've given us the conversion factor here. Every one mil is 0 0.001 inches. So I suggest that we begin by taking this quantity in inches and converting it to mils. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is multiply by the conversion factor, which will look like this. Every one mil is equal to 0 0.001 inches. Okay, so when we use the conversion factor in this way, you can see here inches will cancel out. So practically, what do we have to do? We have to take the number 0.104 and divide it, since this is in the bottom, divide it by 0.001. Okay, so I'm gonna just type that in. If I put it here, I think you can see it. So 0.104 divided by 0.001. Okay, and we get 104 mils. So this is now in the correct unit. Okay, it's in the correct unit, so we will be able to substitute it uh, into the formula. Okay, so now we can maybe uh, also note that the other quantity we're given in this question is the resistance, right? So we're given the resistance, and we also know the value of K. So I'm gonna write down the formula now. So the formula looks like this. And remember, we're solving for the length. So we're trying to solve this formula for L. So we could either manipulate the formula right now, or we could first put in the values and manipulate the formula. I might, I'm gonna manipulate it first, but you're welcome to do it by substituting first. So if I want an equation for L, the first thing I do is this cross multiplication. So we're gonna get R times D squared is K times L. All right, perfect. And now we're gonna solve for L by dividing by K on both sides. So here we go. This is the correct formula now for the length of that wire. And all I'm gonna do now is substitute the given resistance value in number 14, which is here, 3.1. And we have to multiply it by D squared. D is 104, so here we're gonna have uh, 104 uh, squared. And then I have to also divide by K. And K, remember, is specific to copper and it's 10.8. And this is what we need to do in order to find the length. Okay, so here we go. Time to punch this in. So we're taking 3.1. We're multiplying it by 104 squared. Okay, you can push equals here or not. It's up to you. If I push equals, I get this. And now I divide by 10.8. And there's my answer. This is the um, length of the wire in feet. Remember, it'll be in feet. Two decimal places, so I'm gonna write down that answer. Right here, 3,104.59 feet. feet. Okay, so this question was um, interesting because we had to first take the given diameter, which was in inches, and convert it to mils. And uh, in addition, we had to rearrange the given formula uh, in order to isolate L. Okay, let's continue. Turn the page. And we will go to number 16 next. Let me get things set up so that we can see still. Okay. Here we go. Problem 16 says... The four dry cells are connected in series as shown in the figure, yes? 
And the question is, find the total resistance and find the total voltage. And well, this is very simple for, for all of you, I think, because it's a simple series circuit. So you know that the resistance values just add and the voltage vol values also just add. So we'll do that. So our total will just be the sum of R1 and R2 and R3 and R4. So we're going to be adding 0.06, uh, 0.03, Point zero three five and point zero four two in order to get uh, the total resistance value. Okay. Point zero oh six plus point zero oh three and point zero oh three five and point zero oh four two. So there's your answer. 0.167 ohms, okay? And how about the voltage? Again, it's just a sum of these individual values. So we're adding 2 plus 1.7 plus 1.82 plus 1.35, okay? Okay, and that is uh, 6.87. Okay, and they, they didn't ask for the current, which might have been the most interesting part of the circuit. Um, you should be able to find that constant current value now. Now that you have both uh, total voltage and total resistance, you should be able to find the current by dividing E by R total. So I might add that as part C, because really that's the interesting part now. Um, the fact that you had to first take these sums in order to do this calculation. So you would be doing 6.87 divided by 0.167, like that. And this would be your current, so 41.14 amps. Okay, so that's uh, question 16 with a little addition. Let's go to 18. Okay, so problem 18 says, a 60 volt electric time clock circuit with several clocks connected in parallel has a two wire line voltage drop of 12 and a half volts when the circuit is closed. Using Ohm's law, find the total resistance of the two wire line if a current of 10 amps exists. Okay, so that's a lot of language here. Um, but essentially, if we're trying to find the resistance, we're going to divide the given voltage by the given current. So we'll just take um, 12 and a half here and divide it by 10. And this will be 1.25 ohms for that problem. Okay, question 20. So in question 20, we've got a series parallel circuit. So two items in parallel connected to this third resistor considered to be in series with their combination. So um, they're suggesting we use this in order to calculate our total. So here we've got the product over sum formula, which does work nicely when there are only two parallel branches. So why don't we use that here? So we've got R1 in series with the combination of R2 and R3. Okay, so it looks just like this. So why don't we work out this part right here first. So you could do the top and get uh, 600 and you can do the bottom and get 50. So the product is 600 and the sum is 50. So now what do we get? 600 divided by 50, right, is 12. So this is 58 plus 12. 
and we're not surprised that this value 12 is smaller than both 20 and 30 because when you're uh, combining parallel resistors, the total resistance will be smaller than any of the individual values. Okay, so the total resistance then for this portion of the circuit is 70 ohms. Okay, let me move our book over. A few more problems. Actually, just uh, 22 and... Oh yeah, there is a 24. So two more problems actually. Okay, so let's look at problem 22. So in this um, problem, we have three resistors in parallel. So rather than using the product over sum formula, which is nice for two uh, resistors, but gets rather gruesome for more than two resistors. Um, we can use this version here instead. Okay, so let's use it to find the total resistance. So in the denominator here, we will have 1 over 48, 1 over 60, and one over 124. So our final answer should be less than 48, right? 48 is the smallest value here. Our answer for our total should be less than 48. Okay, so you can do this a number of ways with your calculator. I'll just show you one way um, that you might like, and it's doing it all in one step. Okay, so I'm going to do 1 divided by, and then I'm going to set up a bracket. 1 divided by, and now I need a bracket. And in the bracket, I will be doing the sum of the three quotients, like this. 1 divided by 48 plus 1 divided by 60 plus 1 divided by 124, and then I close the bracket and push equals. And this would be the total resistance. Here's the hundredths column. This will round up to a five. So 21.95 ohms would be our final answer uh, for problem 22. Okay, so I hope, I hope you saw what I did there again. I just put a bracket around those three quotients. I know you can replay the video, but I'll just do it once more. So I'm doing one, you can check the display, one divided by, and now a bracket. And inside the bracket are the three quotients. So one divided by 40, oops, by 48, plus one divided by 60, plus one divided by 124. Okay, just like that. So that's one version. You may know uh, other ways of solving that as well. Okay, last problem, number 24. So let me get that in our view here. You see it there? I think you can at the top. So let's read it together. One two-wire section of a 24-volt watchman clock signal system is operated through a 450-foot length of lead-covered cable. The size of the conductor is number 18 and the diameter is 40.3 mils. What is the resistance of one conductor? Express the answer to the nearest thousandth. Okay, so there was actually an error in your textbook in this formula. The left-hand side should say resistance. Okay, and in fact, this is um, very much, what was I going to say? Oh yes, very much like the formula from uh, problem 12, okay? If you flip back, the difference now 
is that there are a number of wires. So that has been added. So let me just show you. I have to move the book, but that's okay. It's probably worth it. Look, here's number 12. Resistance is KL over D squared. And here's 24. The resistance is KL over D squared times N though, because there are a number of wires, more than one wire. Okay, how many wires in this question actually are there? Looks like two, two wires. Okay, so the value of N here will be two. So anyway, let's write down the formula. There it is. And what are we trying to solve for? That's the key. Read it. What is the resistance? So in fact, we want to solve for the val sorry, for the variable that is already isolated. So we don't have to manipulate the formula. We just need to know what we're substituting for k, l, n, and for d. So k is still 10.8. We're still referring to copper wire. What is the length of one wire, of each wire, right, in feet? Um, it should say that here. 450 is the appropriate length. Okay, so that's the correct quantity in feet. So we've got the right unit as well. N refers to the number of wires and it's a two wire section. So N is two. Lastly, D and D has to be in mils. So we'll check that and it is. The D value is 40.3. So there's an extra number given here, right? It says that uh, the size of the conductor is number 18 and that is not used at all in the problem. Okay, so all we do is substitute now. So here we go. We're gonna take 10.8. We're gonna multiply it by 450 and by two. And then we're gonna divide that by the square of 40.3. Okay, so if you want, you can work out the top first and work out the bottom first and then divide, or you can do this all in one step. So I'll show you all in one step. You just do 10.8 times 450 times two, right? You can see the display. Then divided by and I have to do 40.3 squared. So 40.3, and of course that's the x squared button to square that, see? Divided by 40.3 squared, push equals, there's our resistance. Rounded to two decimal places, 5.98 ohms. Okay, so I hope that, um, you were fine with those solutions today. If not, please don't hesitate to send me an email message. Uh, what I would like for you to do is to complete all of the odd numbered problems in this um, unit or chapter of your textbook, okay? So please try those odd numbered problems. The answers are at the back of the book for your reference. Um, there are a few answers that are rounded incorrectly in this exercise. Please check Blackboard because I will be indicating which problems have the incorrect rounding and I will also um, give you the correct answers for the three problems I am referring to, okay? Thanks very much, have a great day, and again, try all of the odd numbered problems um, in preparation uh, for your unit test at the end. Thanks, bye-bye.